Hey everybody, welcome back to my RPG recommendation series, and first off, I'm just going to reiterate what I said in my update video, that uh, the format of this series is going to change to just be single games per video. Uh, the other videos were really time consuming to make, and to watch really, because mostly they were over 20 minutes, probably close to half an hour each, and you know, not everybody has time to watch a half hour video, so these shorter videos should be good for everybody. Better for me, better for you. So, one game at a time this time. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully the new format will be good for everybody, but let's get into it. So today, we'll be looking at a Super Famicom game by Squaresoft. But of course, being this series and being me, I'm not going to recommend a game that, you know, everybody already knows they should be playing or should at least try, or is on, like, everybody's recommended list. So there's going to be no Final Fantasies in this series, and no Chrono Trigger, no Secret of Mana, nothing like that from Squaresoft, at least. And Square actually has a whole range of great games on the Super Famicom that are less known. I mean, mostly because they weren't released outside of Japan, but some other ones also. But anyway, we're going to be talking about one of those Squaresoft games that never came out in the US. Anyway, let's get into it. Live Alive was developed by Squaresoft and released in 1994 for the Super Famicom. It's an interesting RPG in the sense that it takes eight seemingly unrelated stories in vastly different time periods and ties them together to make an interesting game. One of the major points about this game is that it's less like one long RPG and more like eight separate mini RPGs packaged together with a final crossover at the end. The character designs for each story were done by different manga artists, and the varying time periods give each section a wildly different look. The time periods can be played in any order, save the final time period, which is the medieval time period. Beyond that though, each story is a bit different and has its own little quirks. You have a caveman chapter, where you're a caveman named Pogo who is tasked with protecting a cave girl from being sacrificed. Also, the caveman can't speak, and none, none of the other cavemen can speak, so all interaction is done through kind of pictorial thought bubbles, which is a really nice effect. There's a kung fu story, where you're searching for a person to inherit your kung fu style, and there are many training scenarios match with the final tournament where, depending on the actions in the game, one of the three possible inheritors is chosen. There's a ninja chapter in the Bakumatsu period in Japan that involves infiltrating a castle in order to rescue a prisoner. This one is interesting because you can actually play it like a stealth game where you could go through the entire story without killing any humans, or you could just go the opposite route and make an effort to kill every human in the castle. It's really up to you. There's an Old West chapter where you play as the Sunset Kid and his partner Mad Dog, and you're tasked with preparing the town for a raid from a group of bandits known as the Crazy Bunch. The idea is that you must search the town to find equipment and set traps for them, and depending on how many traps you set, the gang will be smaller and smaller for the final battle. The modern day story is one of the shorter ones, and it's actually not so much of a story, but six somewhat strategic pro wrestling matches. Your goal as the main character Masaru, whose name in Japanese actually is similar to the Japanese pronunciation for muscle, uh, wants to become the strongest fighter, so he sets out to fight the various other wrestlers. The hook is that you learn their special moves when they perform them on you, so there's some strategy involved in powering up Masada to his maximum level. In the near future story, you're a psychic boy named Akira who uncovers a sort of military conspiracy plot. He has the ability to read people's minds, so a lot of the plot revolves around him using that ability in order to gain information and progress the story. There's a far future story as well. The protagonist is a robot on a spaceship. It's actually quite interesting because there's no fighting at all sans the final boss, and it's mostly about progressing the story and talking to the crew and the creepy atmosphere of the ship, which is somewhat like the first Aliens movie. This is my favorite one out of all the stories. Finally, the medieval section is the last act leading up to the final boss battle. 
There are also hidden dungeons and ultimate weapons for each character in the final act, as well as ample opportunity to level up for the final battle. Overall, Live Alive is one of those games that definitely should have been localized back in the day, but just never got the localization it deserved. Luckily for you non-Japanese speakers, though, there is a patch version of the game floating around, so if you're into emulators, feel free to search it out. It's quite a fun game, and it's criminally overlooked. So that'll end this RPG recommendation. I'll be back again soon with another recommendation, but until then, take care, and I'll see you next time.